Being in the cars, we often get caught up in wheels, tires, suspension upgrades, and power mods. But being a car person has a lot more to offer and that is community. Those bonds you build with fellow car enthusiasts can create some relationships with some amazingly supportive people. This is Grant, and he's one of those people, and right now he needs our support. Grant has stage four esophageal cancer, and we wanted to make this video so we can share his story and let him feel the love from the car community. I met him back in 2017 at my first Wookiees in the Woods event, which he was a part of running. Wookiees in the Woods is a community-driven event at the Tale of the Dragon, loved by so many. Since he was one of the original people involved with this event, I wanted to let him tell his story. My name is Grant Hammock. That's my Mark II TTRS, and I'm here to talk to you about Wookiees in the Woods. started making a little money in 2003. I bought a B6 A4 Quattro manual sport. It was a big deal for me. It was my first like new car purchase on my own, you know, young guy, whatever. It's a car I had when I started dating my wife. I still had two cars and so it's allowed me to have two cars this uh, this whole time. So thanks babe. I uh, love you. But there was two Volkswagen dealers in Nashville at the time and I was just driving by their lot one day and saw a silver Mark IV R32 sitting out there. It was probably about August and I just had to go check that car out. And I'll never forget sitting down in that car the first time and feeling those seats and that steering wheel and just being like, these are the coolest, most comfortable seats I've ever sat in. <laughs> and that steering wheel was so fat, that leather was so clean. Once you start driving it, the exhaust note was, was just absolutely intoxicating. <laughs> But they let me take it home for a night and I knew before I even pulled it into the, to the garage that I would probably be trading in my Audi on that. And I sure as I did, they, I just remember them asking me like, what color do you want? Blue was just a little too flashy for me. And it was down to silver or black and I, that black magic pearl is all for me. Bought that car new, I think I paid like 28.5 for that car, brand new. And knowing what Mark IVs go for now, especially if you mothballed one then, like, gosh, I wish I'd bought another one. Stuck it in a storage container, um, but so I had that car for 10 years, uh, but it was, uh, I had about 91,000 miles on it when I sold it to Pavel. Yeah, it was the car I took to all the events. Suspension, I think KW Variant 1s, got rid of those heavy Aristos and put some Ultra Legeros on there. You know, fatter rear sway, and, and really, that's when it really fell in love with that car. That car was so much fun driving around the Dragon and those mountain roads. It, it, it's, it's almost like that car is, it's idiot proof. Kind of figured it out with a lot of the all-wheel drive cars and that's as long as you don't break too hard mid-turn and as long as you don't come in way too hot, you know, and with these cars a little slow in, but man, you can come fast out. So that's all that really matters. And I just love that R32. I, I, to this day, no offense, Pavel, man, I wish I hadn't sold you that car. <laughs> and it would be different if that lady hadn't rear-ended you at that red light and it was still coming to Wookiees and I could drive it, but I'd sure do miss my girl. There's not an elevator pitch for Wookiees in the Woods. There's not a 30 second synopsis of what this event is. Cause it, number one, it means something different to me than to you and to everybody else you'll talk to. To me, it's about hanging out with these friends that now I've known for 15 years or some of them that long and, or 10 years, or I would say it's just, a, it's a driving event and it's a driving event centered around the dragon but that we go and enjoy lots of other roads around there. And it's and the fact that it is kind of one central location, while we wish that we could fit more people there, I also think it's kind of good that it, it's gonna keep the event family oriented, if you will. And it's never gonna be able to be something that can get too big just because of the geographical location and the space aspect of it. But, you know, we're an event that has been able to raise money and, and give money out and that is just something to be really proud of. So it's a, it's a driving event, Nathan. That's, that's the answer to the question. It's a driving event. So it was just a post on the Mark IV R32, you know, on VW Vortex. And uh, it was our only source of information. I mean, it was, such a, it was such a good source too. I mean, now you can follow the Instagram page. You can shop on the Facebook page. You can go to the Wookiees website, you know, whatever. But like back then, that was the only form of communication. That was the first year, that was 2007. The car was still relatively new at that point. We were all just geeked to get on there and see what people were doing to their cars. And someday a guy posted up that, you know, the Northeast R crew was gonna come down and run the, the Dragon. And I was familiar with the Dragon because I went to college about an hour from the Dragon. And I was gonna go visit family in Charlotte anyway. So driving from Nashville to Charlotte, Dragon's about halfway in between. Figured I'd spend that Saturday with them, hanging out. And uh, that's what I did. And showed up and met them at a little pull off there on the 
the Tennessee side of the Dragon. Hung out with them most of the day, got my t-shirt, got some stickers, met some folks. The first years, 2007, 2008, it definitely was not Wookiees. I don't even think we started it calling it in Wookiees until 2010, and there was this guy, screen name on Vortex was Hot Dog, and he made a comment about R32 sounding like Chewbacca screaming in the woods, and somebody, maybe Hot Dog himself, said, man, it sounds like Wookiees in the woods, and that, that was the genesis of the name. It was about the same in 2008 as well probably 20, maybe 25 tops. And we lined them all up that first year. I remember being in that picture and then we lined them up again in 2008. But I stayed in 2008, I stayed overnight. And that's when I really got to know a lot of the guys I'm still friends with today. And if I met them in 2008, that was 14 years prior, you know, 14 years ago, so it was crazy. It was Edwin Scheibers, and I, I'm probably butchering his name, but uh, we used to kind of refer to him as DJ Belgian Chocolate. If you found that thread from 07, he's the one Whoever started it, that, that was Edwin's screen name. And um, yeah, he was involved the first two years and then for whatever reason decided not to come back in 2009. And that's when me and Chris Hall and Brian Mooney kind of took over the organization of it. And uh, that's when we figured out that Fontana Village existed and moved it over there. And I remember having that first raffle prize giveaway, if you will, we had somebody, uh, Bruce had given us a uni brace to, to give away or raffle off or something like that. And that was the first Wookiee raffle item, if you will. When Abe took over is when, really when the raffle, him and Matt especially, they've just done a great job with getting sponsors involved and getting them to want to give us items that we can turn into raffle items. I mean, I'll never forget, at one point somebody gave us a titanium exhaust for a Mark VI R. Like, dude, I mean, we're talking about probably $4,000 and it's crazy. And we've had items that are worth more than that donated. It just, I, I can't not talk about is the sponsors that continue to sponsor us, that have sponsored us in the past, that kind of got us to where we are today. I mean, like... I really think Wookiees went to the next level once we added the raffle. And the raffle would be impossible without all these people standing up here. So I really need y'all to give your loudest cheer of the night for everybody staying up here. Give it up for our sponsors. Jeff with, with UM and, and Fred, man, I like, thank you, dude. Like everything you do, I, I know you, you come and, you know, make some money down there too, but at the same time, man, you, you know, from the pint glasses to just you always being so open and willing to support us, like, thank you. I mean, there's so many sponsors that have been with us for so many years. I'm, I'm not going to go down the list. I, I wouldn't do them. I'd forget somebody and, and, and not do it justice. But man, for me to sit here and think it's all been me or Abe or Matt or the t-shirt design or website, whatever, it really, like, it's, it's these sponsors that have really taken us from, from being just a, a driving event to a, a true car event and something that people turn into instead of just driving for a day or two that people are turning into a week of, you know, vacation. By that point, we were doing raffle stuff and getting people and people, you know, wanted to come and see what they could win and want to take advantages of the amenities at Fontana Village. And I think, too, a lot of it was us doing a good job just being friendly and, and welcoming to people. I think that that really helped a lot, too. It was always a blast. And I, I, I was proud to be one of those people that was out there at 2, 3 or 4 o'clock in the morning sometimes. Got old pretty fast, though, when you're trying to go drive at uh, 8 or 9 o'clock the next morning with, with hungover. It wasn't, it wasn't really a good idea. I do kind of miss those days. I, I can't do that anymore. But uh, yeah, the bonfire has always been a good rite of passage, I guess is probably the thing. Like you come, you come to Wookiees, you need to get at least one of those nights on your first trip out of the bonfire. And you'll probably get some moonshine thrown your way or some Polish vodka thrown your way or something like that. And that, that's your, your, your joining uh, ritual, if you will. <laughs> Great that you stay off site. And that, if that's how you want to do your vacation, you know, more power to you. But man, you don't get the full experience if you don't get to stay there at Fontana. And I, I hate that they don't have more accommodations for everybody, but we're kind of strapped with how, what, what, what the layout and how much space. There's, there's not much we can do. The glow stick thing, that's just something that kind of started organically. In the past, the, the throwing the glow sticks around, which, you know, I think Gatch has done some really good photos around those before too, or in the past. I mean, just like this past year, like, who thought to blow up Wookiees in the woods and, and broadcast it on the, the hills far away or on a rooftop? Like, like come on, man, like, this stuff's brilliant. Like, people are doing this stuff on their own and, like, you know, celebrating this event in their own ways. And the stickers to the, the rad shirt designs that we seem to, Abe and Matt, seem to come up with every single year. It's always some new design and it's always so cool and different. And I'm, I'm, I'm proud of it. But at the same time, like, I can't take too much credit for it. I mean, I really think a part of it really boils down to that we've never really been about trying to make any money off the event, that it's been more about just celebrating cars and driving and being in a place that is a great place to drive then once you get 
past that you get to the, in, the interpersonal relationships of people how you get to know people and like i said like these started out as car friends and now they're they're some of your best friends and i think the the charity aspect helps a lot too and that that really if people are splitting hairs about if they're going to go to this event or that event maybe they decide to come to the one that, that's turned into a charity thing i mean when blount county rescue squad showed up this year and said look at this ram 2500 that you guys bought for us they weren't joking like we have literally given them enough money for them to purchase a, a vehicle with just our donation. Even if, I've, even if I'm just 1% involved in that, you can't help but be proud. This is Chris sent me this. What, what is Yeah, okay, so that's a really good story. So Chris and Jesse and, and a lot of the other crew that I'm still really good friends with and make sure I go and at least get one good drive in with those guys every year. Um, and, and of course, keep in touch with throughout the year too. And, you know, some of my closest friends in real life now. Jesse, I think that was his first 9-11. And of course, this is all Chris's, this is all, he was the mastermind behind this. I was just happy to be involved and, and get to execute. But he says, hey man, when Jesse, you know, we, we figured he'd probably be drinking a little bit one night and pass out a little early. So we just waited till one night he went to sleep and then he, Chris had a bunch of cans of uh, pink Plasti Dip. And so we Plasti Dipped his uh, brand new 911 and he used 997, 911 wheels in uh, hot pink. Now, we, and we did it right. We got the, we put, plastic wrap behind the wheel to cover up the brakes so we didn't, you know, tear up anything permanent. And I guess if we had taken that plastic dip off, you know, right away, it probably wouldn't have been a big hairy deal. But then he proceeded to drive the Dragon numerous times and then drive it all the way back to upstate New York. So it probably heat cycled that, that Plasti Dip on there, how many, God knows how many times. Apparently it was very difficult to remove. So apologize, Jesse, but man, we had fun and that is a great memory and a great story. So, oh, I, I've got a picture. I've, I've got a, it's one of my favorite pictures. I'll, uh, I'll send it to you. Like a Homer, don't moment. Just like, I can't believe I didn't see this coming. Like I knew you guys were gonna do this. And I was diagnosed with esophageal cancer in January of 21. So I've been dealing with this now for uh, almost a year and a half and been through a lot of different types of chemo and, and radiation and you know we're not giving up or anything like that but nothing's really been working so far and some of my friends that, again that I've, I've all known through Wookiees and got to know that way um, they got together and, and made some t-shirts. You may have seen the purple shirts or not but you know what Grant here has been part of Wookiees in the Woods since day in the beginning and we absolutely love him. We all know we are his second family we wouldn't be here without him, period. So, this weekend, we have decided to grab a couple shirts that most of you have already signed. We're gonna give these to Grant. These are your love signatures from us to him and everything he's been through. This is our family back to him, showing our love and support for a man who put this together and brings us together once a year. So, give it up, round of applause for Grant. I don't know, man. It's just I, I try to still live my life like I'm not fighting cancer at the same time. Yeah, when you're feeling sick from chemo or feeling bad or things hurt or whatever, yeah, it's hard not to think about it. But everything else about my life has been really good. It's, I've, I've lived a really great life. If this were to end up killing me or something like that, then everybody wants more quantity of life, but I've not lacked for quality of life. And, and things like Wookiees in the Woods is, is one of the reasons why. I mean, it's, I've gotten so much joy Look forward to that event every single year, um, even when it's been stressful to plan it. My fr knowing the friendships that I've made and reading about some of the impacts I've had on people and what people have, what the, how they remember me and or how they met me and an impact I made on their lives or an impression I made on them. Reading about those stories on the GoFundMe page that Abe started or reading about those on something on Facebook, man, it just gives, gave me emotions I, I've never felt before in my life. And it, they were all good. I mean, there's nothing negative about it, but it was just, it's still hard to process. I'm still kind of wrapping my head around it all. I got two t-shirts full of signatures that I've got to figure out some way to display them. And it's going to be tough, but um, you know, it's, it's just, just another sign that I guess that I've been doing something right all these years. If this is your first time at Wookiees, please raise your hand. Look at that. We know this event is hard to explain, it's hard to describe on the internet or social media or whatever, but I hope now that you've been here you can experience it yourself, you can uh, somehow articulate that to your friends and uh, we hope to see y'all again in the future. So thanks for coming. Woo!